Welcome back to our IB Biology video series. This is the fifth video in IB Biology Topic 6, Human Physiology, where we will be looking at neurons, action potentials, synapses, and neonicotinoids. The human body is a complex arrangement of cells. Among the most important are neurons, the cells that make up our nervous system. They are responsible for transmitting electrical impulses. Neurons are generally classified as sensory, which transmit signals from receptors, structures that detect stimuli, to the brain, or motor, which transmit signals from the brain to effectors, structures that carry out responses. For your IB biology exam, you are expected to draw a neuron and identify its various structures. Let's go through it. Each neuron has a cell body containing a cytoplasm and a nucleus. Connecting to each body are multiple short, branched fibres known as dendrites. These transmit impulses towards the cell body from other structures. Each cell body also has one long cylindrical fibre of one micrometre in diameter, named the axon. This transmits the impulses away from the cell body towards other structures. However, some neurons have a unique outer coating consisting of many phospholipid layers, known as myelin. This myelin is created by specialised cells known as Schwann cells, which leave gaps known as nodes of Ronvier between adjacent cells. These myelinated nerves are capable of transmitting action potentials 100 times faster, as the impulse can jump from one node to another a process named saltatory conduction. So, the structure of a nerve allows it to transmit electrical impulses. But what are these, and how are they created? Well, the term to familiarise yourself with is an action potential. However, to understand action potentials, we must first outline the normal resting state of a neuron, known as the resting potential. At resting potential, the inside of an axon is said to be more negative compared to the outside. Numerically, we say it has a resting potential of minus 70 millivolts. But where does this imbalance of charge arise from? Well, there are three contributing factors. A sodium-potassium pump, which pumps three sodium ions out and two potassium ions in, creating a concentration gradient and imbalance of charge. The axonal membrane, which is 50 times more permeable to potassium, so it can diffuse out, causing the concentration gradient to be less steep for potassium and exaggerating the imbalance of charge. And negative proteins inside of the axon. An action potential is a two-stage process in which the resting membrane potential of an axon is lost, causing it to become suddenly more positive, known as depolarization and then more negative, known as repolarization. It is important to note that for such an action potential to be initiated, impulses from dendrites must first bring the start of the axon to the threshold potential, quantified as minus 50 millivolts. At this level, voltage-gated sodium channels open, allowing depolarization to occur. But what is depolarization? Well, Depolarization uses these open voltage-gated sodium channels to allow sodium to enter the axon due to the existing concentration gradient created by the sodium-potassium pump. This causes the inside of the axon to become more positive, so the membrane potential rises to plus 30 millivolts. Repolarization immediately follows depolarization. During this, voltage-gated sodium channels close to prevent sodium entry, whilst voltage-gated potassium channels open, allowing potassium to diffuse out down the charge gradient. This causes the inside of the axon to become more negative again, so the membrane potential falls to minus 80 millivolts. Note how repolarization does not achieve resting membrane potential exactly, but overshoots it, known as hyperpolarization. To re-establish resting membrane potential of minus 70 millivolts, the sodium-potassium pump must exchange ions for a few milliseconds. So, now that the action potential has begun, how does this propagate along the axon? 
Well, since only the start receives an impulse to reach threshold potential, adjacent parts must independently reach minus 50 millivolts. This is fulfilled by local currents, which we will explore now. You've now reached the end of the preview for this IB Science video. If you want to check out the full video, head over to our website and select a membership plan today.